Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's continue the next part, part 2 of chapter 1 from the book Mysterious Monsters, Fact or Fiction. This chapter dedicated to definitely one of the most popular cryptids out there, the Mothman. I was seeing the views and the comments associated with part 1. Lots of people excited when it comes to the Mothman. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's start part two. And this will be another segment. This one, though, is interesting because the title of this segment is called Mothman is a Paranormal Creature. So, wow, it looks like we're getting something into the world of ghosts and spirits, maybe. So let's go ahead and let's share that here. And then I'll give my own Thoughts and opinions. This one is a little bit longer segment, so I'm going to divide it into two parts. And then I'd love to hear what your own thoughts are as well. So here's what it states, and it comes from an author by the name of John A. Keel. It says, John A. Keel was a freelance reporter in 1966. Long interested in the paranormal, beyond the normal, Keel was in the process of writing a book about UFOs when he heard about strange events happening in the little town of Point Pleasant, Virginia. People in the area had been reporting hundreds of UFO sightings, and then several people reported seeing a frightening, man-like, winged creature. They didn't know whether the creature was associated with the UFOs or not, but they were worried about what it was and what it was doing at Point Pleasant. During his years studying UFOs and other unusual occurrences, Keel had noticed that paranormal events tended to follow a pattern. For example, a flurry of UFO reports would come from a certain area of the country and then abruptly stop. The same pattern was often true for sightings of strange creatures. Keel began to develop a theory connecting all of these events. He theorized that Mothman and other paranormal winged men who have been reported as long ago as the time of the ancient Greek philosopher Plato and up to today exist in a separate dimension and spend much of their time manipulating humanity. The winged men include the Garudas from ancient India, fairies from many cultures, sky serpents seen in 19th century America, the owl man seen in England in the 1970s, and others. Sometimes the appearance of one of these entities brings a warning, sometimes merely fear or mystery. The title of one of Keel's books, Disneyland of Gods, expresses this theory that people on Earth are part of the Disneyland with which these paranormal entities entertain themselves. When Keel heard about the mysterious monster at Point Pleasant, he traveled there and interviewed more than a hundred people. He went to the sites where Mothman was seen, hoping to witness the monster for himself. He discovered that many elements of what some paranormal researchers call high strangeness seem to be related to the Mothman sightings. These included visits to witnesses from mysterious strangers, some of whom purported to be from the government and who tried to discourage people from talking about Mothman, strange phone calls to Keel and to many of the Mothman witnesses that consisted of weird electronic tones or mysterious voices asking odd questions and then predicting disasters, including one at Point Pleasant, poltergeist activity, and other bizarre occurrences. Abruptly, after a few weeks, the Mothman sightings ceased. Then, a year later, the Silver Bridge, a 40-year-old bridge spanning the river from Galapagos, Ohio, and Point Pleasant, collapsed, dropping 37 cars and trucks into the frigid waters and killing 46 people. Keel became convinced that somehow the Mothman sightings and the other weird occurrences had been harbingers of the bridge disaster. He wrote a book, The Mothman Prophecies, that details his experiences and those of the people at Point Pleasant and discusses many other kinds of weirdness that seem to support his theory about paranormal entities manipulating humankind. The Mothman Prophecies was adopted into a popular 2002 movie. The following article is taken from another of Keel's books and tells some of the strange occurrences in Point Pleasant during the time Mothman was a visitor. And then here's that segment. Five men were digging a grave in a cemetery near Clendendine, West Virginia on November 12, 1966, when something that looked like a brown human being fluttered from some nearby trees and maneuvered low over their heads. 
It was gliding through the trees, witness Kenneth Duncan of Blue Creek said, and was in sight for about a minute. The men were baffled. It didn't look like any kind of bird, but seemed to be a man with wings. They discussed it with a few friends and would have forgotten about it if others in West Virginia had not also started seeing the enigmatic flyer. About a year earlier, a woman living on the Ohio River some miles from Clinton was amused when her seven-year-old son ran into the house one day and excitedly told her that he had seen an angel, a man with wings. She assumed it was just his imagination and thought no more about it. In the summer of 1966, another woman in the Ohio Valley, the wife of a doctor, was in her backyard when a six-foot-long thing soared past her very rapidly. She thought it resembled a giant butterfly, and she dared to mention the incident to only a few people, but all of these random, anonymous events were only the prologue to the monster mania, which would grip the whole western edge of West Virginia in November 1966. And then it goes, Mysterious Monster. Another man, Newell Partridge, had seen two glowing red objects in a field near Salem, West Virginia, on the night of November 14, 1966. His dog, Bandit, a German shepherd, had run into the field and vanished. The very next night, around midnight, two young couples, Mr. and Mrs. Roger Scarberry and Mr. and Mrs. Steve Millette, were driving through an abandoned World War II ammunition jump known as the TNT area, seven miles outside of Point Pleasant, Virginia, when, as they passed an old deserted power plant, they saw a weird figure standing beside the road staring at them. It was shaped like a man, but bigger, Roger Scarberry said later, maybe six and a half or seven feet tall, and it had big wings folded against its back. But it was those eyes that got us, Linda Scarberry declared with a shudder. It had two big red eyes, like automobile reflectors. For a minute, we could only stare at it, Roger continued. Then it just turned and sort of shuffled towards the open door of the old power plant. We did not wait around. Roger stepped on the gas pedal of his souped-up jalopy and headed out of the TNT area for Route 62, which leads into Point Pleasant. As they shot down the highway... We were doing better than 100 miles per hour, Roger claimed. His wife cried out, it's following us. All four swore that this bird was low overhead. Its wings spread out to about 10 feet. It seemed to keep up with the car effortlessly, even though its wings were not flapping. I could hear it making a sound, Mrs. Millette, an attractive 18-year-old Burnett stated. It squeaked like a big mouse. It followed us right to the city limits, Roger went on. Funny thing is... We noticed a dead dog by the side of the road, but when we came back a few minutes later, the dog was gone. The panic-stricken quartet drove directly to the office of the Mason County Sheriff and excitedly poured out their story to Deputy Millard Halstead. I've known them all their lives, Halstead told us during our first visit to Point Pleasant. they never been in any trouble, and so I took them seriously. Deputy Halstead returned to the TNT area with them, As he parked outside the abandoned power plant, the police radio in his car suddenly emitted a strange sound like a speeded up phonograph record. He shut the radio off. The bird, however, was nowhere to be found. The next day, at a press conference, it was held in the county courthouse and the four young people repeated their story. One of the reporters there, Mrs. Mary Hyre, Point Pleasant correspondent for the Athens, Ohio Messenger, and local stringer for the Associated Press letter told us, I've heard them repeat their story a hundred times now to reporters from all over, and none of them have ever changed it or added a word. News of the Scarberry Millette sighting was flashed around the world. It even appeared in the Pacific edition of the military newspaper Stars and Stripes. Television camera crews from Huntington and Charleston invaded Point Pleasant, and that night, the normally deserted TNT area resembled Times Square on New Year's Eve. But Steve Mallet announced, I've seen it once. I hope I never, ever see it again. Mothman cut crazy capers all over West Virginia that November. Sightings were reported in Mason, Lincoln, Logan, Kanawha, and Nicholas counties. Most of the population remained skeptical, but the near hysteria of the rapidly multiplying witnesses were very real. Police in the city of Charleston, West Virginia, received an excited phone call 
from one Richard West at 10.15 p.m. Monday, November 21st. Patrolman D.L. Tucker handed the call. West insisted that a Batman was sitting on the roof next to his home. It looks like a man. It's about six feet tall and has a wing spread of six or eight feet. West reported excitedly. It has great big red eyes. Did it fly? Tucker asked. It's straight up, just like a helicopter, West answered. In St. Albans, West Virginia, just outside of Charleston, Mrs. Rue Foster claimed that Mothman appeared on the front lawn on the evening of November 26th. It was standing on the lawn beside the porch, she told reporters. It was tall, with big red eyes that popped out of its face. My husband is six feet one, and the bird looked about the same height, or a little shorter, maybe. It had a funny little face. I didn't see any beak. All I saw were those big red poppy eyes. I screamed and ran back into the house. My brother-in-law went out to look, but it was gone. The day before, on November 25th, Thomas Yuri was driving along Route 62 just north of the TNT area. The time was 7.15 a.m. He noticed a tall, gray, man-like figure standing in the field by the road. Suddenly, it spread its wings, a pair of wings, Yuri said, and took off straight up like a helicopter. It veered over my convertible and began going in circles, uh, three telephone poles high. It kept flying right over my car, even though I was doing about 75. Mr. Yuri rocketed into Point Pleasant and went straight to Sheriff George Johnson. I never saw anything like it, he confided to Mrs. Hyrie later. I was so scared I just couldn't go to work that day. This thing had a wingspan every bit of 10 feet. It could be a bird, but I certainly never saw one like it. I was afraid it was going to come down right on top of me. And then that's it. Let's go ahead and let's finish the next part in the next video. But this will be at least this part here that we'll talk about. For starters, as you can see, the chapter, Mayor Mothman is a Paranormal Creature, once again goes into John A. Keel's a uh, fascinating look into this encounter, this this uh, inaugural encounter when it came to that Point Pleasant, West Virginia area. So it looks like right from the get-go, this Mothman definitely hit it big there. It not only appeared to one witness, but to several, and is alluded to having at least killed one of those witnesses' dogs there. But it looks like it all started essentially when it came to some of the men basically seeing something hovering above what they described as a brown human being. And then these men that were digging a grave at that cemetery saw it go by. They may have been actually one of the very first witnesses. And then all these other witnesses, you notice the theme too, right? That it all follows the same. They all describe it's a man, a taller man, about six feet tall. It has these wings. And then, of course, it has these reddish eyes. And then several of them stated that it shot up straight into the sky and that it was moving at a basic speed without using its wings. So it's almost like it went up into the sky and then it flew without necessarily flapping its wings. I found that interesting too that this guy John Keel was basically stating that this Mothman is paranormal in the sense that it's something from another dimension. Apparently it uses our area along with who knows what else our area as the Disneyland of the gods. So basically they basically they come over here and then they fly all these or they go on all these rides to scare humans and then basically entertain themselves as that is what he was stating. So another interesting angle, I haven't really thought of that when it comes to cryptids. I just thought of them as just living their lives and then just have we just happened to run into them, that kind of stuff. But here in this case, they're actually enjoying it like they're enjoying it like as if going through different parts of rides throughout different parts of either this country or the world altogether. But fascinating stuff. Let me know what your comments are. Uh, let me know if you have any more experience, something like that associated with the Mothman. Again, it's a creature that is still very, very popular to this day and can't wait to see what else is going to showcase here within this chapter. All right, everyone. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.